Hey everybody, we're back in my Brooklyn kitchen. This is Baking with Friends. I'm Julianne. Today we are making toffee cookie layer bars, which is basically a mashup of a toffee chocolate chip cookie bar and a seven layer cookie bar. So that's what we're doing today. And today I'm gonna to be joined with uh, my good friend, Christine, who I have known since we were in kindergarten. So one of my greatest friends, uh, longest time friends, I would essentially say my oldest friend in the whole wide world is going to be with me today as we talk about um, cookies and layer bars. And today I'm wearing my UC Davis paraphernalia just for her and hi Jen. Um, because we both went to UC Davis. So once she joins, we'll go ahead and get started. But for everybody that's gonna be following along, we are preheating our ovens right now to 350 degrees. And you can just go ahead and do that right now. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. If you have not taken out your butter, please take out your butter. You're using butter, you're using margarine, or using some sort of plant-based vegan margarine. Uh, I know Jen, right? <laughs> UC Davis. Uh, here is Christine. I see you. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna add you in. I think I've done it. If not, we're gonna find out shortly. Christine, you might have to request again. I think I might have accidentally. Oh no, I think it's working. Um, back to what I was saying, preheating your oven, 350 degrees, get your butter. It should hopefully already be out of the refrigerator because it needs to be room temp. If it's not, please immediately take it out now. Butter, margarine, plant-based um, butters, whatever you're using today. And we're gonna go ahead and use those. We're gonna cream those together to make the base of uh, the bars today. So again, seven layer bar plus uh, toffee chocolate chip cookie bar. So you should have butter that I just talked about. You should have flour, you should have um, vanilla, brown sugar, and that's gonna be the base of your cookie bar. And then the toppings that you get to use for any of the seven layer bars uh, portion of the bar today is going to be everything and anything that you got literally in your pantry. So traditionally it is uh, butterscotch chips, chocolate chips, uh, white chocolate chips, nuts, shredded coconut. But because of, you know, this whole COVID, we're at home, don't know what's in your pantry. This is a great time, I like to say, to kind of empty out your pantry and just take anything that you've got in your pantry and just sort of like offload it and put it into this bar because it's essentially going to be the toppings of whatever you want. So if you've got nuts, if you've got, um, doesn't even matter what kind of nuts, walnuts, hazelnuts, pistachios, almonds, you know, cashews, whatever you've got, uh, raisins, if you've got, maybe you've got cranberries or, you know, pumpkin seeds or any kind of chocolate chips. Maybe you don't even want chocolate in this thing. Uh, anything that you would like to include as a topping in this. Uh, Christine, I think you have to go ahead and try to ask to join again. Um, and hello to everyone that just joined. Uh, just to go ahead and try to get you back in. I'm trying to get Christine to, oh, small technical difficulties. I'm trying to get Christine onto the broadcast with me uh, because today we are making, for those who just joined, toffee chocolate chip bars uh, from uh, UC Davis inspired, hence the reason why I'm wearing the sweatshirt right now. Uh, and Christine is going to join me. So Christine, uh, maybe get off of Instagram, get back on Instagram, and then try to go ahead and add me into the live feed and we can go ahead and try to do it that way. Let me see if I can, uh, I'm gonna attempt one more time. I'm gonna try to do it on the back end, Christine. We'll see. Is that oh, working? <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Everyone's like, why are you talking to yourself? Oh my gosh. <laughs> right? I know, for like the longest time. Christine, welcome. Baking with friends. Uh, I've told everyone to preheat their oven to 350 while you get yourself settled. We okay. are lining up all our ingredients. We are going to make the base of this cookie bar first. So everybody at home, you should have, I like using a nine inch pan for this. I like my bars a little bit thicker than the normal. Uh, recipes usually call for, hey, hi Duke, 
They usually call for a 9x13 pan. It doesn't have to be a 9x13. It can be a regular, I like using a 9-inch square pan. Like this is a basic 9-inch square pan. If you don't have that, if you've got random sizes, 11 by 17 or 11, or 11 by 17 would be huge, don't use that. 11 by 7, like something like this. Or you can do your standard 9x13 if you want it to be like a little bit thinner, something like this. So you've got choices. It depends on what you want to use. Um, Christine, are you using a 9-inch today? I am using a, yes, I think it's, oh, it's an eight by eight. That's Is fine. That yeah, yeah, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. So what it's going to do, just so everyone knows, uh, typically, if you use a larger pan, it will spread out a little bit more, and so it'll be a little bit thinner. If you're using a, a smaller pan, like this, I'm using a nine, she's using an eight. If you're using a smaller pan, then it's just going to be a little bit thicker. Uh, I personally like thicker bars, so I'm going to go with the smaller pan. Uh, you can grease your pan any which way you want. Some people, hey, Catherine, some people like using um, the butter method where you go ahead and you take your stick of butter, you grease your entire pan around with it. Maybe you put parchment paper at the bottom. Uh, I like for this particular recipe and for most of the time, like brownies and bars, I like using the aluminum foil method because it's less cleanup. And I know we should, we have more time on our hands because we're clean. But I'm, I'm kind of like, nah, I don't want to clean up any dishes uh, more than I have to. So I just take aluminum foil and I go and I do what I call the overhang method. So I'm going to show you that really quick. I'm also wearing my UC Davis paraphernalia for everyone that has joined in because Christine and I both went to UC Davis. Me too. Uh, and for those who missed the intro, Christine, one of my, my oldest, we've known each other since kindergarten and one oh, of no. my favorite people, my, one of my greatest <laughs> friends. <laughs> so, and we both went to Davis, and we're doing this um, recipe that's inspired by UC Davis. So sometimes you can do an overhang. I conveniently have these, like, handles at the ends of my pan, so I'm going to not go over. But if you've just got a square pan that doesn't have a handle, usually go about two inches over is what I would do. And then you're just going to press that down into your pan, like so, right? And then all you do is if you've got cooking spray on hand, and if you don't have cooking spray, if you want to just use, like, you know, regular oil and just, like, spread it around, or even butter, if you, if you have just butter on hand, you can use that too. Whatever's in your pantry right now, like I said, um, as I've always said, don't go out and buy things that you don't have. Like, why? You know, you, they're not necessary, like, in this, like, time to go out and just, like, you know, randomly go to the store and get things. So I'm just going to go ahead and spray my pan. I feel like you use old-fashioned butter. Are you using old-fashioned butter? Okay, so Chris yes. is going to show you uh, the butter method <laughs> while I show you Julia's being lazy and she's using aluminum foil, right? Okay, so I just sprayed it with just cooking spray. I'm using this random Crisco olive oil nonstick spray. And I've used that and I'm just putting it on my pan and I'm going to set it aside and I'm not going to worry about it right now. So that's my nine-inch pan. And we yeah. don't have to flour it or anything? No, you don't have to do anything. I, I would just go ahead and grease it uh, any which way that you'd like. So if you can butter it like Christine is, you can use butter at the bottom and just go all the way around the pan. Don't think that you're putting too much butter. A lot of people are like, oh, this feels like a lot of butter. It's not. Trust me, it's not. Um, unless it's like steaming out of your pan, like you've got like layers of butter uh, on your pan, then, then at that point you've used too much butter. But at this point, no, you have not used too much butter. So that's what you're doing. Uh, you're preheating your oven to 350 if you haven't already, and we're gonna get our ingredients together to make the base. So I think I mentioned, and since I'm wearing my random UC Davis paraphernalia, Christine and I both went to UC Davis, and uh, this recipe is inspired by a cookie bar that they served us. I'm not gonna talk about how many years ago, Christine, we were in school, <laughs> but we were in school a really long time ago. A long time ago, but you should show them your cookbook. I will. It's so older. So this cookbook is older than when Christine and I went to school. So at least that makes me feel a little <laughs> bit better. <laughs> so Christine and I went to this, uh, to UC Davis. They had this thing called the coffee house. Every day I would go in the coffee house and I would buy something like a scone or I would buy this toffee chocolate chip bar. And it just so happens that it was a student run organization. And in like the 1980s, they wrote a cookbook, a like basic cookbook. And I'm going to show it to you right now. This is like basic, basic level stuff. Um, and in this cookbook, I kid you not, is the recipe for the toffee bars that we're about to use as the base. I've adjusted just a little bit uh, for the time, but I was showing Christine this recipe, and it was kind of 
I mean, it's super, the way that they went ahead and they put it in here, like, like, that's it. It's, it looks like a coloring book, actually. So it's like, it's, it looks like an elementary school coloring book. But it's like for college students, right? Like, what do college students have on hand? Like, they don't have, you don't need fancy directions. Like, this is basic. So uh, we're using this coffeehouse cookbook from like the 1980s that I randomly have. Uh, we did not go to school in the 1980s, by the way. Yeah. We were not in college in the 1980s. And like, so you, now you can guess how old we are. But I'm not good. We weren't in school in the 1980s. So coffeehouse cookbook. Uh, Christine and I both went to UC Davis, but I've known her since kindergarten. Uh, so we are going to go ahead and start making our base. Both of us have stand mixers. You don't need a stand mixer at home. You can use your, you know, spoon and your mixing bowl, or if you've got a hand mixer, that will make life much easier because you do not have to put as much uh, elbow grease into your creaming your butter. And creaming your butter is basically mixing your butter and sugar. So like when you see recipes and when they say cream, it's, you're basically integrating sugar into your butter. So I'm gonna give you guys a really attempted uh, angle. You know how my technical difficulties are. Attempted angle of giving you um, a look at my KitchenAid stand mixer. Christine's stand mixer is actually in a better angle, so you might check hers out as well. You can see me pouring things into it. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. Um, so I've just got two sticks of butter. It's one whole cup of butter. Uh, for those at home that are just like, this feels like a lot of butter. Yes, it is a lot of butter because we're essentially making kind of like a pseudo shortbread. It's like a shortbread mixed with a cookie. And that's why we're putting a lot of butter in it because anybody that has seen a shortbread recipe, uh, shortbread is mostly butter. So if you've got fancy butters, go for it. I mean, this is the time. This is the time to use what you've got. If not, unsalted butter, butter stick is perfectly fine. If you don't have sticks and you have like tubs, it's basically you're looking for one cup, okay? We're gonna take both of those. I'm not even gonna cut the stick. I'm just gonna open. And actually, if you haven't greased your pan yet, usually these, these like wax paper pieces are great for greasing your pan because they already got butter on it and you don't have to put on anything else. That was an after the fact since we already greased our pan. I hope you've greased your pan. So we're just gonna go ahead and dump this in. I'm gonna go ahead and try to show you this angle here. Just dumping your butter. We're gonna cream our butter this way. Uh, you could also be using margarine if that's what you've got or some plant-based butter, that's fine too. And it's gonna be two whole sticks. Um, for those at home, you can basically essentially half this recipe if you'd like, if you just wanna have like half a portion. This is a, a recipe that lends well to that. Just use a smaller pan. And again, you can just use your regular basic nine inch pan. We'll just be a little bit thinner. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take uh, brown sugar. It can be any kind of brown sugar. It can be light brown sugar, dark brown sugar. Some people, I've got this random fancy coconut palm sugar that I found in the baking aisle. I know. Stop. Of Mary, I haven't it. seen Mary yet. She, she hasn't been here to like chide us yet. Um, coconut palm now, sugar. Now, do you have to pack the brown sugar? We do have to pack the brown sugar. So, and the reason why we're going to do that is I changed my angle. The reason why we're doing that is because the toffee flavor is gonna come from the brown sugar. I put this in quotation marks because the brown sugar is technically not actual toffee. We're creating that flavor through the brown sugar. So if you wanna use other alternative sugars, just note that your base, if you use coconut palm sugar or date sugar, it's going to be a little bit darker. So the darker your sugar, the darker your cookie base is going to be, right? I recommend like a nice regular brown sugar, light brown sugar is fine. But again, use what you've got on hand. If you don't have like random light brown sugar and you only have dark brown sugar, fine. You know, golden brown sugar, I don't know. What other, other kinds of sugars you got, um, that's fine. And actually I'm gonna use a bit of both, which is gonna get me in a lot. Of, if Mary were here, hi, Melissa. If Mary were here, she would probably chastise me. But Christine is here and she's gonna let me do what I want. <laughs> so. you can do whatever I want. I am not, right? Cool. I feel like we've known each other too long that you're just gonna let me do what I want because I'm just gonna do it. Anyway. I know, and I'm wondering why is this the first time we're baking together? I know, you know what? And that's the thing, we never did this when we were in college. And I'm like, I can't even, I don't even think I really baked in college. I kind of, not really. Oh. I think I we, we were like, doing like the pastaronis and I stuff. Know, Remember really that? Did. I lived on a lot of ramen and like mac and cheese in a box. And I think I think the fanciest I ever did, and Jen, who used to be our roommate, is actually on this right now. She knows we used to make pasta salad. Like that was our gourmet meal, right? So <laughs> so I am in this case scenario, I'm just putting my measuring cup directly. I just have a handy dandy. This is actually a three-quarter cup measuring cup, supposedly. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just press down my brush. Oh, Mary's here. So for those of you, just to give you a little back history, 
Mary, Christine, and I, and Jen used to be roommates in college. So we're, we're all Davis alumni, Davis alumni. So mm -hmm. Mary, I'm sure, is going to heckle us as we go along. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pack my sugar. You want to, like, get it to be pretty. I mean, it comes a little bit off. That's okay. Um, you can put up to, and here's my caveat again, the basic recipe usually is a cup of sugar. I skim off the sugar at the top because we're about to dump a whole bunch of other stuff on top, including sweetened condensed milk. So you're not gonna miss the sugar. You will not it's miss very the sugar. Very sugary. <laughs> so I'm gonna, so I'm gonna go ahead and put, I've decided I'm just gonna use, I'm just gonna use brown sugar. I won't use my coconut palm sugar today, just my brown sugar. So I'm dumping that in. Okay. Okay, did you dump it in? I Why did. Are you talking? I kept on chatting and I dumped it in. Oh, okay. All right. Everyone's like, I've already dumped mine in. Get moving, get moving. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put vanilla or, and here's my extra moment, I have butterscotch extract at random. I know, Christine. Don't say I knew it was coming. <laughs> so I'm going to put a little bit of vanilla and a little bit of butterscotch extract, but vanilla is the way to go at the moment. It's one and a half teaspoons. I'm going to put a teaspoon of vanilla right into the bowl. We're going to mix everything at once. We're not going to have to mix and stop. And then I, because I have this butterscotch extract that I found in the middle of my pantry that I still need to get rid of, I'm going to put a quarter teaspoon of that. And maybe half a teaspoon. No, I'll just put a quarter teaspoon. And I'll actually just put another half teaspoon of vanilla. So you should have one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. Okay. And that's straight in. All right. And then we are going to cream that together. So I'm going to go ahead and just push down my paddle here. If you've got a hand mixer at home, this is the point where you're going to go ahead and mix that all together. Just turn it on. I'm putting mine on low. You keep it on low? I'm just going to mix it until it combines. It doesn't have to be super combined, right? It can be, I'm going to lift up to look at it a little bit and I'll move my angle so you guys can see a little bit better. Woo! causing a ruckus. <laughs> so mine is still a little bit, I've got my spatula. I'm gonna go ahead and push down. As these things go along, especially in stand mixers, I usually have to push down to get a really good com combination. If you have a hand mixer, it's actually a little bit better sometimes because you can control the creaming process, but I'm just gonna let this go a little bit more. Until it's about combined, it doesn't have to be perfect. I think it's good enough. I can see some sugar granules still in my um, my mixture, but that's okay because we're about to add flour in. So it's gonna all mix together. So I'm just gonna dump that out like so. And then we're gonna get our flour. It's two and a quarter cups of flour. Uh, you can go ahead and do the spoon in method, which is more accurate for weight. This is a giant two cup measuring cup that I have. If everyone's wondering what the heck I'm going on with right now. And I'm just gonna- huge. Spoon. I know, so I was um, randomly online buying, as I feel like we're all doing these days, and I online bought these progressive measuring cups from Target, that's a shout out, uh, because I realized that my measuring cups were kind of like old and outdated, and I don't know if you guys remember, when I was baking with Melissa and we made peanut butter and jelly bread, I broke my one cup measuring cup because of the amount of peanut butter I was trying to put into the metal measuring cup. So I upgraded my life and got some progressive measuring cups, which apparently also has a two cup measuring cup, which is kind of crazy. If you're spooning it in, make sure that you level off the top. How are we doing, Christine? You're probably way ahead of me. You probably pre-measured I remember I pre-measured. Yeah. She was smart about this. So I'm waiting. I'm doing like an eye eyeball method right now. Okay. I'm going to dump that in. And that's two. Once again, Mary will point out, I'm sure. Do we do it in made. parts? What was that? Do we do it in parts or just dump it all no, in? dump it all in. So okay. this is gonna be in like most of the time like with cookies and things like that, when you mix in your wet and your dry ingredients, just like cake, you have to kind of be a little bit cautious because if you over mix, it's going to lend to be, change the texture basically of the bake. Uh, in this particular, bake because we're using it as a base of things I'm not making individual individual pieces I don't think we have to be so super cautious so I'm just dumping all of that in so now I've got a whole bunch of flour as you can see as I knock over everything 
whole bunch of flour and my sugar, my butter that has been creamed with my sugar. And I'm just going to go ahead and do this. If you are using a hand mixer or stand mixer, start low because if you don't, flour is going to splatter everywhere. Or if you have a splatter guard, even better. But I'm going to start low. And then you can pro progressively get it up to speed. If you're doing this by hand, which you can be, you're just going to go ahead and mix everything together until it's all combined. And again, you can do that. You just have more elbow grease, right? So we're going to mix it literally until it just comes together. You're going to start seeing it bunched together in the bowl. Like mine has just bunched together into the bowl. You can see a lot of the white flour splattering inside, but it's kind of gotten this chunky texture now. Okay. I usually push down, like I said before, because stand mixers especially push everything up when it's mixing. If you have a hand mixer, your control is going to be a little bit better. And if you're doing this by hand, you'll definitely see the dough coming together. I don't think I need to turn this on anymore. And actually, I'll show you what it looks like if you go ahead and continue this by hand. Because I don't want to over mix. Mine's kind of crummy. Yeah, it should be crumbly and loose, but still held together. I know that seems like a complete opposite of everything that I'm saying because I'm like, oh, it's crumbly, it's loose, but it's still together. But that's basically what it is. It kind of is, sort of has a texture of it's kind of like oatmeal-ish, right? Loose, but together. Okay. So I'm being haphazard of cleaning off my spatula and my paddle. But you just basically take that all down like so. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and just show you guys a little bit closer. You can kind of see what we're dealing with here. See, it's packed down. It's really thick and it's packed down, but it's still kind of crumbly and loose, right? But I'll run away. <laughs> so, throw it away. See, this is mine. I'll show you mine. You tell me. Do I need to keep mixing? Can you, can you see it? Oh, I can see it. No, I think, Christine, take it off. And then grab your spatula and then do a couple turns. Okay. And just like incorporate like the rest of the flour. Go dig in the bottom. I would like dig in the bottom. But I can feel the butter. Like if I put it in my hands, like I can. If you put it in your hand, it'll take some right now. Cut it down. If you put it in your hand right now, it's it's basically like cookie texture, right? It's very chunky. Yeah. Yeah. Then it's fine. Don't don't overthink it. It's good. I'm not gonna throw it away, Mary. But it should have a really nice. Hmm brown sugary buttery smell, which is basically what we're going for. So we're going to take this prepared pan that you've done, your nine inch pan, and we're going to take this entire block like so, and we're just going to dump it right in. Okay. It's going to be a little bit, so like I said, this is usually a cookie dough, right? We're making a cookie base for the seven layer bar. So I'm dumping that straight in. I'm very tempted. There's no egg in this. I'm very tempted to eat the spoon after I'm done. So. <laughs> no judgment. I feel like, yeah. And if you're making food with kids at this point, yes, let them lick it. There's no egg in it. So I'm just going to go ahead and I literally just, I'm going to press it in to my pan with my hands. It's squishy. And that's great. And you basically just want to go ahead. It doesn't have to be super thick at the bottom. All you want to do is you want to make your dough cover the entire base of your pan. How thick is yours? Mine, it was about, a, I would say about half an inch around. Okay. It's going to be smaller than that though, because as you can see, I'm only about three quarters of the way in and I still have to push my dough. You can use your hand if you, it's getting messy. You can use your spatula, but I like controlling it more with my hand. It's going to be wet. It's not going to be super crumbly like pie dough or shortbread. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect either, guys. It literally can just be pressed down until it covers the entire pan. About, I would say maybe, you can try to flatten it out, maybe about half an inch or quarter inch. Remember that this is going to be the base of a bar. So the thicker the base is, that's how thick your cookie bar is going to be. If you don't like really thick bases, then try to err on getting a little bit thicker. I found that my corners are very thick because I haven't done anything. So 
I see this thing. This is the moment where, like, if you have the back of things, like, here, you can press down using, I'm using the back of my measuring cup, and I'm using that to press down, too, if you're finding it to be a little bit messy, if you want to get it a little flatter. You can use the back of it. Things that you already have in your house. And again, doesn't have to be so exact. Just press down. I can smell the butterscotch extract that I dumped into this, which is telling me that it's either going to be delicious or not. All right. So I think mine is pretty okay. Pretty, pretty all right. Hopefully you've preheated your oven because we're about to put this in the oven, or at least I am, um, at about 350 degrees. It should be preheated. We're going to put this in for about 10 minutes, so it's going to par bake. Um, so that way, because it's a cookie base, it needs a little bit more time to bake uh, before we put all the other toppings on it. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the oven for just a little bit, for about 10 minutes, and then we're going to go ahead and check on it, and then we're going to put all the rest of our stuff on it. So we're par baking, 350 degrees. Let's go. As you can Sounds see, all good. the flour, as usual, do it on my counter. So middle rack is fine. And I'm going to go ahead and wipe my hands right now. So I went ahead and I gave you a whole bunch of substitutions in the case scenario that you don't have, like, a whole bunch of butter and flour. You can do different bases. Because if you want to make a basic seven-layer butter, the basic seven layer bar is basically taking graham crackers, crumbling them up, and then adding butter, melted butter to it, and using that as a base for the bar. You can totally do that in this case scenario if you don't have any of these ingredients on hand to kind of make that cookie base. If you don't even have, you know, graham crackers and you have, I don't know, Oreos, Nutter Butters, maybe you have some Girl Scout cookies just like lying around, shortbread, whatever, any kind of like hard pantry cookie, you can take those crush them, crumble them up, about one and a half cups, and like a stick of melted butter, that's about half a cup of butter, uh, melt that together, combine it all, and then take that mixture and press that down to the bottom of your pan. And now you've got a different base. So this is one of those recipes that, again, because we are adapting, Christine and I um, are adapting this recipe from two different recipes. It's a toffee chocolate chip cookie bar. And if you wanted to be extra, you could have added chocolate chips to that toffee bar and made like a chocolate chip cookie base with that toffee mm -hmm. bar, which I was contemplating. But in the back <laughs> of my mind, I thought, no, Julianne, you're going to dial it back Too in. Too much sugar. <laughs> because I'm about to dump a whole bunch of toppings with it. So again, if you don't have, I know, Melissa, I'm always extra, I know. And so sometimes, like I said, it's, it's a good thing. Sometimes it can be a bad thing. And this week, I'm going to be good and I'm not going to do it. So we're going to go ahead and we're waiting 10 minutes. And I didn't set my timer. Got to set my timer now. 10 minutes. On my handy tandy timer, 10 minutes, uh, for the cookies to go ahead and par bake. And then after that they've come out and they par bake, that's when we're going to dump all the toppings on it. This is going to be the easiest thing you're going to do today for this bake. And to be fair, if you were doing the graham cracker cookie method and you just press that into the base, like you'd probably be done by now. I mean, I gotta be honest with you because us making a chocolate, like a chocolate cookie base or rather a toffee cookie base is adding time to our baking. Because essentially this recipe, and I'm gonna show you, if anybody's gotten the sweetened condensed milk is what we're about to put on top of it. Uh, they call this cookie, the seven layer bar that we're about to adapt for this recipe, a magic cookie bar. Because you're gonna pour this on top and it's gonna become like caramel dulce de leche in the oven while it bakes. And you don't have to do anything. We're not gonna have to mix it, we're just pouring it. Like this is how basic this is going to be. So, oh dear. <laughs> I forgot that there's also a drinking game that happens while, uh, <laughs> while I'm working. And I'm not sure what the word of the day is. If it's extra, there you go. That's another stop for you. <laughs> Uh, so while the, the, uh, the bases and stuff are baking, Christine and I are pseudo cleaning up our messes, uh, but you don't necessarily have to, uh, because the things that we're going to put in together now, so sweetened condensed milk, if you didn't have sweetened condensed milk, you could have taken coconut milk, if you have that lying around, and basically reducing it with sugar, and that will give you the same kind of, uh, texture that we need for the cookie, and it also makes it vegan, 
So all you need to do with that is you just take one full fat. It has to be full fat coconut milk. None of that light stuff, you guys. Full fat coconut milk. And then you dump some sugar in it. You put it over a saucepan. You reduce it in half. It takes about 30 minutes. And now you've got coconut condensed milk. So if you've got that on hand, that's what you can use. If not, regular old. I have this Borden Eagle brand. It doesn't have to be this brand. Just any condensed milk. Uh, this is a regular 14 ounce can. And that's what we're going to use today. Uh, you need, if you've got it, uh, sweetened coconut flakes. That's the base of the major, like, base of seven layer bar. I have, like, this random half bag that was in the back of my pantry that I'm going to go ahead and use. I know. I have not used this in years. I was so glad to find a recipe that uses it. I know. And this actually lasts, so everyone's like, oh, years, guys. This stuff lasts <laughs> a really long time. I'm not going to lie to you. This is processed. So there's, like, preservatives and stuff in it. I mean, it's not exactly like healthy shredded coconut, you know, it's not fresh. Uh, it's not dried. If you have the dried, sweetened, like dried coconut at home, I mean, you're probably winning at life because you're much healthier than Christine and I. We have, I know, this half bag. I don't know why I have it. Half bag of sweetened coconut. So that's what I've got. Uh, we have, I've got butterscotch chips. Christine has caramel. And I've got these. Oh, a few toffee chips. Christine, did you mm -hmm. say caramel or caramel? Caramel. There's an A after the R. I see Look. caramel. Can you see it? Do you see that A? Don't I, forget it. I don't know. But some people call it caramel. You talk amongst yourselves, guys. Do you pronounce it caramel or do you pronounce it caramel? I pronounce it caramel. I don't know. Uh, Christine's using caramel instead of butterscotch chips. Fine. Excellent. Again, this is a recipe that if you've got stuff in the back of your pantry, like half things, half jugs of things, like half bags of nuts. Like this is the perfect opportunity. Uh, Melissa says caramel. She thinks we're wrong. <laughs> so thank <okay>. you, Kat. <laughs> so I've also got like a half bag of white chocolate chips. Like this is what I'm saying. Anything that you've got. I've got a half bag of chocolate chips. I had some random mini chocolate chips. That's fine. Uh, I also had, and I was telling Christine before this all started, I had like bars of chocolate. This is a Cadbury dark milk salted caramel bar. Before COVID happened, I was in Europe and I bought a whole bunch of Cadbury's because Cadbury's are my favorite chocolate. <laughs> Fun fact, everyone, Cadbury's. And I randomly had all these weird flavors that I brought back that have been sitting in my cabinet that I haven't eaten. I know I should have just eaten it straight up, but I haven't <laughs> eaten it. Um, and I thought that this would lend itself well. So I chopped up this bar of dark milk, salted car, I'm not gonna say caramel, caramel, salted caramel, there's an A, caramel uh, bars. So that's what I'm using. You see caramel apples, right? Caramel I apples? Caramel corn, caramel apples. I don't, guys, I don't know. Uh, I also had this coconut cashew milk chocolate dairy milk. So I, I saved a little bit of this because I actually really like this chocolate and I'm going to eat it myself. So <laughs> <laughs> I started chopping it up and then I started tasting it. And I'm like, I think I just want to eat that straight up. So I'm going to. So I chopped up like half of that and like one of these. And I'm going to toss that into my, my layer bar. Uh, basically, like I said, anything you've got. You've got, I don't know, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. You've got M&M's. You have any kind of nut. You can try to make it a little healthier. Do you have dried cranberries? Do you have raisins? Do you have... I mean, you could probably put oats in it if you wanted to, just to be a little bit healthier. Um, depends. Like, you know, whatever you want to go in and do. Because basically, anything we're putting on top of this is going to meld together and combine into the bar by the condensed milk. So the condensed milk is going to create that um, binding for you. So this is the point where if you've got anything in your, anything that you think is going to taste good as a combination, don't be shy. Take it out. If you've been saving some random chocolate for a good occasion. This is it, guys. We are in a uh, lockdown scenario. We are in like staying at home time. Take care of yourselves, you know, give yourselves a treat. So gonna do all that. Um, we only have, Christine, I've got less than five minutes before I'm taking it out of the oven, haven't you? Yes, um, about? I'm taking it out, yeah, in about two or three minutes. Okay, cool. Is there I something you're looking for? Like, does it need to be brown or? Um, it's gonna just be a little, we're car baking it. So in normal circumstances, 
if you put like it because this is a bar and it's not a regular cookie you put a toothpick in and you you pull it out it should be pretty clean that's cooked but because we're par baking it honestly it just has to look like it started cooking it doesn't have to be completely solid because you're going to put it in the oven for another 20 minutes so if it's not okay. cooking okay. now in the next 20 minutes it will be completely done the only reason why we're cooking it before we put everything else on it is because it takes longer usually to bake. And because we're putting it in a pan that has like a little bit of, you know, volume and it's thicker, it's going to take longer to make. So you don't want to burn the top of your seven layer bar because you're waiting for the bottom to be cooked, essentially. So we're cooking the bottom first, just a little, to give it a little help, kind of in the same ways if anybody makes pies at home, if you pre-bake pie shells and such, when you make fillings for it or, or anything like that, it's sort of, sort of similar to what we're trying to achieve because we don't want to over bake our layer bar on top and you don't want to under bake your cookie layer on the bottom because once again, we are combining a mashup of sorts. It is a toffee cookie bar that you can put chocolate chips to if you're being extra. Toffee cookie bar plus a seven layer bar, what is essentially called a seven layer bar. And the reason why it's called seven layers is because you put all sorts of toppings on top. Um, in this case scenario, like Christine and I said, we're just cleaning out our pantry. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, this is the moment guys. Like, I don't know if you guys like hoard pantry items, but I found that I've hoarded pantry items. I, I <laughs> talked to my mother about this the other day. I gotta be, I gotta be real with everybody. I like, my mom had this whole thing when we were growing up. She liked her pantry like she was in a store. So she would buy like five cans of something, right? She was going to use oh. one because she never wanted to go back out in the store. She'd be like, ah, it's in my store at home. So she has all these pantry items. So when all this stuff happened, she was sorted. And I opened my pantry and I was like, I think I'm my mother because I've hoarded like so many canned goods. So you know <laughs> what I've done? Like I, every time I go to like my Marshalls, they have like those fancy foods and uh, like, you know, just triple salt and, you know, I never did. So this is like, uh, yeah, so I have all sorts of random crap in my, my, that's why I'm glad I'm baking with you, Julianne. It's, yeah, I it's mean, nice like, to use the random stuff. Like, why did I buy this butterscotch extract, everyone? Like, this is the stuff that I'm talking about. And I found it in the back of my cabinet. I, I never used it. And now anything I'm baking, I'm like, why not? Toss it in. So I've got a few minutes, not even a minute, probably a couple seconds left of grabbing out the shortbread bars. Uh, hello to everyone that just joined. I think Christine's having a little bit of a technical difficulty on your side. It's still catching up. Oh, there we go, Christine. You're sorted again. We are making toffee cookie layer bars. And we're about to do the layer part of the bars. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get out my stand mixer so it's out of the way because I'm about to show you what's about to go down with these layer bars. I'm gonna move my stand mixer out of the way. And my timer has stopped. It did not beep at me, but it has stopped. So I'm gonna go grab the layer bar out, take a look on my oven. Okay, so Leave your oven on, it's still at 350. I've taken out my crust. It's a little bit solid at the top, but it's still kind of gooey. And it's about like, a, it's like a kind of like a golden color because I went ahead and I used, like I said, I used a light brown sugar. If you use a darker sugar, it will be darker. And I'm gonna show you guys when we get in the pot filler. Let's not burn ourselves today. So mine is pretty solid and it's kind of golden. -y. Ooh. And I just moved it because I angled, shouldn't have lifted. Uh, I should show you this way instead. It's kind of like, you know, it's pretty formed, but it's still loose. And if I touch it on the top, it's, it's coming off a little bit, but it's, it's like not completely solid. That's fine. Because again, this is going to bake some more in your oven. We just gave it a head start, right? So we gave it a 10 minute head start. So now what we're going to do is you've got a very hot pan. Please put it down on a pot holder. And we are gonna do what is considered the magic part of this process. We are gonna go ahead and top this. You start the toppings not with chocolate. Do not, do not, do not. Why? Because it's going to melt. Because your bar right now is hot out of the oven, right? 
don't put chocolate. Unless, and I'll make this caveat, unless you want kind of like a melted chocolate layer at the bottom. You can't hear me? Christine, <laughs> this is not good. You might have to leave and join again. I can't hear you. I have no idea what you're saying right now, Christine. I don't know. You hang up, hang up. <laughs> you're gonna have to hang up. Well, let's show everybody else what you, uh, hang, do like universal hang up, hang up. Is that how you guys do phones? So it's like hang up and then rejoin. Hang up. <laughs> Melissa, you know, this is my very bad miming acting happening right now. That was, a lot of people don't even know what this means. And people say like, you know, call, because you never had to do that. You never had a whole phone where you would call. So if you try doing this, like a lot of people don't know what that is. So Christine's having technical difficulties. I am trying to get her back. I'm gonna grab her back. And I've got my cookie bar layer that's out of the oven sitting on my countertop right now it's going back in so i said to you that we need to start christine can you hear me now i can i don't know what's going okay, on okay and i can hear you so we're sorted again so Good. i'm starting with my nuts i'm gonna go ahead and put my nuts on the bottom i'm gonna do i have some pecans that i crushed and so the exact measurements are if you're going exact a cup a cup of nuts. We're gonna cover the entire base. You don't have to have a cup. If you don't have enough nuts right now, and I don't know, you have half a cup, a quarter cup, fine. Dump it in. We're gonna go for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just scatter, and I'll give you guys a little bit better view of my pan. I'm just scattering my nuts. So mine didn't even cover. I'm gonna move this. I actually also have some almonds that I'm gonna go ahead and put that randomly, I've slivered almonds. This will make about a cup, and I'm going to stump that on top. And again, we're doing the nuts first because it's not chocolate and will not melt. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Rustic is fine because we're about to dump a whole bunch of other stuff on top. Okay? Next, if you're using coconut, if you're using the shredded coconut, this is your moment. You're gonna take your shredded coconut and we're gonna do that as well. And it says about a cup if you wanna be exact with measurements. I will be because just to be, if you wanna sprinkle it on because you're not sure how much you have, that's fine too. This is about a cup and I'm just gonna go ahead and sprinkle it on top. And I'm actually gonna get messy with my hands and the rest I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle on the top and I'm just gonna lay it out. So now it's got coconut, it's got nuts. That's two layers I've just put in. All right. Next, you are gonna put in your chocolate chips, your butterscotch chips, your white chocolate chips, your toffee chips, whatever you've got. Um, like I said, I went ahead and I mixed a whole bunch of chopped chocolate that I'm gonna go ahead and scatter on the top of this. So mine is a mix of darkened milk chocolate bars and I'm gonna take that and I'm just gonna dump it on top and again it can be scattered in any way you want if you're using chocolate chips about a cup will do how much are you putting on a full cup yeah about a cup Christine but if you want to go a little bit less you can and then I'm gonna do butterscotch chips I'm gonna do half half a cup of butterscotch chips and actually, I've got these white chocolate chips that I randomly wanted to get rid of. I'm just gonna do a sprinkle of that. I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna measure that. It's probably, I don't know, like two or three handfuls. And again, this is where you can be creative with whatever you wanna put on top that you think will work together. I went ahead and I put maybe about a quarter cup, I would say, of um, white chocolate chips. And then I'm gonna take my measuring cup and I'm gonna do half, Half a cup. That's a quarter cup. Uh oh. Toppings in the side, toppings in the side. Okay, there we go. And then another quarter cup of butterscotch chips. Can I put my caramel on now? Yes. Dollops of caramel on top, anywhere you like. About a quarter cup, half a cup, depending on your, your taste preference. 
And then when you're done, so I have put um, nuts. I have two different types of nuts. Pecans, I have, that's another word. Do you say pecan or do you say pecan? <laughs> pecans. I have pecans, I have almonds. Sometimes I say almond, but uh, almonds is what I've been told you're supposed to say. Almond. <laughs> Uh, I also have coconut, shredded coconut. I have my chopped chocolate bars. I have butterscotch chips, white chocolate chips. Uh, this is basically all the layers of bar that I'm put on top. And then now I've got my sweetened condensed milk and I'm just gonna open the can. Ooh. Like diabetes. Like so. I know diabetes I can. <laughs> and you're just gonna pour the sweetened condensed milk on top and it doesn't matter how exact you are, just make sure every crevice gets covered. So if you are lobbing some caramel on top, Christine's putting caramel on top, I would probably dollop maybe a quarter cup, maybe up to half a cup, but you're putting a whole bunch of sweetened condensed milk that's also gonna caramelize on top, so. Do you have to use the whole can? Um, you can go ahead and cut if you would like. If you're using a larger pan, if you're using a nine by 13, I would use the whole pan. Since we're using a shorter pan, you can probably use about two thirds of a cup of the sweetened condensed milk. Okay. If you want to use the rest, like I have a little bit left at the bottom of this, I can pour the rest on top or you can go ahead and use it. Guys, if you haven't had Vietnamese coffee in your life yet, yeah. like this, this is basically what you're putting at the bottom of your coffee and it's gonna be delicious. So if you, I could scrape out the rest of this with my spatula, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna save literally- you put it straight in your mouth? No, I'm not gonna do that, oh. please stop. I'm gonna go ahead and save, it's about, mm, I would say I probably have maybe, maybe an eighth of a cup left down here, maybe a quarter of a cup. But my entire pan right now, as you've seen, it's completely covered. I think it's good enough. I don't have to put the rest of this in. You can though. And if you're using a larger pan, if again, if you're using one of those wider nine by 13 pans, then use the whole thing. Cause you're gonna need the whole thing to cover the entire pan. If you're using a square pan like Christine, Christine's pan is actually smaller. She's an eight inch pan. You can stop at about two thirds of the way through this condensed milk, save the rest of it. And like I said, if you've never put condensed milk in coffee before, you are missing out. You don't have to add sugar. This is your milk and sugar in your coffee. And if you make it iced coffee and you add this, when? Oh, that's a drink when that you can have. drinking coffee, Julianne. <laughs> I know. So that's it. We're gonna put this in the oven another 20 minutes. Your oven is still on, I hope, 350 degrees. Yes. We're gonna put that in another 20 minutes. Now, we're gonna wait for the magic to happen. So basically, uh, the condensed milk is going to both caramelize and create binding agent for all the things that you put on top of the bar. So you have got layers of items that are going to come together on top of your bar, and it's also going to adhere it to the base of the cookie that we went ahead and created. So we start at, I like starting uh, at the lowest amount of time. So about 20 minutes. In 20 minutes, we're gonna go ahead and check it and then see if it's done. If it's not done, check it in another five minute increments. It's okay to open your oven while things are cooking. Just don't open it all the time. Uh, I had this conversation a few, a few bakes ago with John who was constantly trying to open his oven and he was worried that that's what was causing his cooking fails. It is not uh, a bad thing, but just remember that every time you open the oven, you let out the heat and it's going to have to warm back up to temperature. So if you're opening your oven for a peak, that's fine. I would actually just turn on your oven light and look through the glass and be like, oh, is it cooked? Is it not cooked? Uh, because then you don't have to wait for your oven temperature to rise again. Now remember, everybody's ovens are different, right? If I'm putting my temperature at 350 degrees, if it's 350 is anyone's guess because based on your like equipment, based on uh, whether or not there's altitude and where you live, that's all going to change the temperatures and time baking or baking time, excuse me, baking time of your oven, right? Uh, Ruby, a couple weeks ago, had a nice thermometer in her oven. She had an oven thermometer to double check her oven temperature. Do you have an oven? Uh, thermometer, Christine? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, Sherry, who just joined, sent me a link the other day to an oven thermometer that I feel like I'm going to have to purchase. So I'm probably going to end up purchasing an oven thermometer at one point or another just to check the accuracy of my ovens. Because again, this is why when you see recipes, there's such a range of time for making things in your oven, right? It's not like exactly 20 minutes, 25 minutes. It's are going to go ahead and have to check. And the reason why you're checking is because everyone's ovens are different. So that is ovens in a nutshell for you. So Christine and I are waiting. 20 minutes is what I put my timer for. I remembered to put my timer this time, 20 minutes. Um, and at the same time, I'm gonna start gathering all my dishes together. I'm gonna totally add my random one eighth of a cup, literally just the dredges at the bottom of sweet and condensed milk I have left. I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna put that in my coffee later. Should we be drinking coffee this late in the day? I wonder, I don't know guys. You should. <laughs> you can always use decaf. That's true, I could. I don't think I have decaf on hand though. I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm totally about to just like eat that chocolate that I told you. Hi, Michelle. Right there. Um, and I'm going to just dump all this chocolate. So hopefully everyone, you have pulled together all the things that you want into your seven layer bar. And you're now putting all these things away as we basically wait for this to cook. Christine, how's California? So for those of you who don't know, Christine is in California. I'm here in Brooklyn, but Christine's in California. How's it going in California it's, right now? It's fine, you know? We're actually gonna have some rain <laughs> tomorrow. Um, but other than that, the weather's been, been pretty nice and I don't know, everything's kind of closed, but you know, <laughs> trying to get out every once in a while. I know. I, you? I do, well, I just read that they're going to, on Memorial Day weekend, they're going to open up the beaches around mm -hmm. here. Um, a lot of people you don't realize yeah, a lot of people don't realize New York has beaches. We do, guys, we do. Uh, and they're going to open up some of the beaches. My only thing is, how does one get to the beach uh, in this time of, uh, of kind of crisis? Most of the time, a lot of people in New York don't have cars. We take, you know, the subway or you take the, you know, light rail to get wherever you want to go and then you walk. But if you're lucky enough to have a car, I mean, apparently the beaches are going to be open as long as you're social distancing on the beach and you guys aren't everyone's not congregating on the beach you can go and you can check it out uh, i don't know i know that in california the beaches are interesting like they don't want you to picnic on the beach they don't want you to like sunbathe they literally just want you to go maybe go swimming if that's what you want to do for exercise or just like walk along the beach but they don't want you actually sitting down and hanging out on the beach and i don't know what the rule is going to be here in new york but it's, it's sort of interesting. Yes, I'm definitely not going on the subway, Melissa. I'm not. And it's also just for a subject. I heard that you guys might have to do reservations on the subway. Have you heard that? No. Why not? Yeah. Why not the New York people that are on this live right now, do you know that we have to make reservations for the subway? That's news to me. No, um, no that, that they're thinking about that. So you guys will have to socially distance. That's yeah, kind of interesting. I mean, I was thinking about it myself because... I mean, I personally, like, living, so, uh, as you know, Christine and I both went to Davis because we both lived in California growing up. Christine and I have known each other since kindergarten. Shout out to Amy Blank Elementary School. What was our mascot? The Broncos? The Broncos. <laughs> the you like, can, Broncos? Good memory. I don't know. I'm just going to say that, and then someone who wow. went to Amy Blank or goes, like, you know, is going to correct me, but I think it was the Broncos. Um, it was the Broncos. And then we went to Sullivan and high school and college. We have been together for so long. We have been together for a really long time, Christine. Yes. <laughs> like, it's, it's basically we've spent our entire lives together at this point. We've spent our entire lives I know. So um, I was, as I was saying, though, because we're both from California, uh, I was used to driving everywhere because Cal we don't walk in California. Correct me if I'm wrong, California people. You know I'm right. We do not walk. We park at the closest parking spot we can find in a shopping center. And if we see a store across the shopping center, we get in our cars and we drive that car across the shopping center. <laughs> we are not going to walk yes. because it's how it works in California, at least for me. I don't know about you. <laughs> and so here in New York, it's so interesting to get used to public transportation. I don't own a car in New York. I'm used to public transportation. And so you have to... 
and like it's gonna be interesting to see how everything gets back when we're all using public transportation like subways and buses and melissa celtics and falcons yes correct that is correct melissa we have known since junior high so that's yeah. another like i feel like a lot of these people for a while and Catherine, Catherine since high school mary who is on this call with us who went to college with us went to junior high with us she doesn't like to remember that time in her was life. it junior high i thought it was elementary school for like a year no she went to junior high with us and then moved back to what she calls the actual bay area and <laughs> in near san francisco so, but she, she, she can try to erase it all she wants, but she went to school with us before we all met back together at UC Davis. Uh, again, if you've just joined us, we have toffee cookie layer bars hanging out. Uh, we're just chit-chatting right now as we do on these things while we wait for the bake to happen. And uh, we have, Christine's probably cleaned her kitchen a lot better than I have. I don't even want to show you my workstation <laughs> now. It's covered per usual covered in flour. Mary gives me a hard time because I really should be wearing an apron, but I didn't do it the first time. And then now I feel like I don't have to, but I get my clothes all floured, especially when we use flour all the time. I have all these aprons behind me. If you have an apron, please wear an apron. <laughs> don't follow me. Um, I have an apron. I know, like that's what these things are for, right? They're supposed to help you not be so messy. Uh, I, on the other hand, I'm gonna have flour all over me and then I'm gonna, dump my clothes into my laundry basket so uh but right now we are making <laughs> i mean christine's just like i can't believe your antics right now i know <laughs> she's she's not giving me a thumbs up you guys like this is how sad it has become <laughs> we are making toffee cookie layer bars 350 20 minutes we're gonna check mine's gonna come out in 10 minutes to take a look at it uh instagram is probably gonna cut us off in the next four or five minutes i was telling christine this is going to be the bake that we're going to do in less than an hour. But again, Julianne chats too much. And so this is going to go for probably a little bit over an hour, but it will probably be the record for shortest bake. That's what we're going for because we are making what I consider fairly, I would say it was fairly. What's your shortest one so far? The shortest one so far was the chocolate chip tahini cookies that I made with Drea about two weeks ago. and. We and put that, that was together pretty fast. That was a little bit over an hour, but by like five or seven minutes. The longest record holder is Melissa with the peanut butter and jelly bread because we went over two hours. By the way, that bread, Bill has told me that's what he wants for his birthday, anniversaries. He loves that bread. <laughs> but it didn't, I don't even think it turned out that well for me. Are you serious? I actually thought it was pretty good. I was surprised. Well, mine didn't look like any of yours. I don't know what I did, but he it, still liked it. So. It must have been Pops. good because he wants it now for his like birthdays and like and he, I know. He, and it's so funny because he totally was making fun of you guys. He's like, "What? You're making peanut butter and jelly bread?" And, and you know, but he loves the bread. He, guys, or, so sandwiches. That's out. what he thought. By the yeah, way. it was really good with Nutella that it was great with Nutella. I didn't put Nutella, I actually put like a, a jam compote on it, if you guys remember, and it was delicious. It actually didn't feel, yeah, we now we've less than two minutes. So you're gonna have to all join again, guys, or we can say sayonara to us. But if you wanna know how this ends and how our bake went, then you'll <laughs> have to get back on. Join us tonight. for the last few minutes. <laughs> uh, Kathy says her favorite, yeah, the vegan chocolate chip cookies were great. I thought the, the breakfast blondies were really good as well. Um, that peanut butter I really like the brownies. The brownies, yeah. the fudge brownies. Oh, those were good. I like that for his, uh, wanted it for his birthday. Oh, see, that's great. Yeah. No, like these are the kinds of things like, uh, I like I like making all these things um, with you guys because I also want to eat them. So I'm glad that we're making them together because it gives me an excuse to make them and eat them myself. So <laughs> I mean, I do, it, I do it for everyone. Like we're doing it together because like, you know, it's our social thing for while we're in lockdown and I'm hoping that everyone's learning something as we as we do these together and Mary definitely fact checks me every time I go off about like some random baking thing she makes sure oh, she's she been good this time I know Are you this time I know. but I will say about the peanut butter and jelly bread that we made a few weeks ago uh that was like went off on like it started on reddit and apparently it went off and I've seen since then all these articles about everyone's making this viral peanut butter and jelly bread and guys we were ahead of the curve we were making that peanut butter and jelly bread before all the people were making the peanut Well, maybe not all the people, maybe most of the people. 
for making peanut butter and jelly bread. You can thank Melissa because she needed to get rid of her peanut butter and hence the reason why. So <laughs> in about you. 25 seconds or so, Instagram is going to cut me off. We're going to all have to come back together. Uh, we have made toffee layer, oh, I can't always remember it, toffee cookie layer bars in the oven and we're just waiting for it to come out. So uh, in the next 10 seconds, I'm going to hang up with all of you guys and we're going to go ahead and rejoin again. And you're going to see the end product of Christine and I and the labor we've done. Hi, everybody. We're back in my Brooklyn kitchen, uh, baking with friends. I'm Julianne. I was on today with Christine, my friend back home from California. Mary, welcome back. I was trying to figure out how to rejoin the Instagram live afterwards. It gave me a whole bunch of different options to, to go ahead and post the last story that never happened before. So yeah, it took a little bit uh, to get back on, but I am back. It just took a second because when I logged off the last Instagram uh, live post, it went ahead and showed me a whole bunch of weird options that never showed me before. So I am hoping that it sorted itself out and uh, it's on because I, I don't know. But we're here. Uh, I am waiting for my toffee cookie layer bars to come out of the oven. It's a mashup of a seven layer bar and a toffee chocolate chip cookie, basically. Uh, Christine, who went to UC Davis with me, hence the reason why I'm wearing all this paraphernalia today, is uh, going to join me hopefully again. Uh, again, it did take a while for me to get back on. Uh, we were baking from, and for those of you who didn't see it in the beginning, Coffee House Cookbook from the 1980s. Uh, that basically had the original recipe for the toffee cookie bar and then we went ahead and we added in our own seven layer twist to it. So we are still live, waiting for the bars. Thanks back, uh, thanks for everyone for rejoining to find out what in the heck happened to our bake. Uh, Christine hopefully will find her way back as well. But yeah, but like maybe it's because I updated my, uh, my app but I literally took it off and then all of a sudden and it said there were like five or six different options of what you do with the live story and usually it's just like share and that's all and then you join again and for some reason it gave me like a million other things uh oh there's christine christine hello uh i'm gonna try to get you in christine hopefully that'll work it took a second i know uh but we're back with christine in a second Hello. Hi. I know, it took a second. I was just telling everybody that Instagram gave me so many different options for after I hung up. Usually it's like share a story, save to whatever. And this time around, it gave me like six options. And I'm like, I, I don't know what to do. And so that's what took me so long because I was trying to figure out which is the option to make sure that this is like archived somewhere. So I've been trying to be very good, guys. Uh, and archive all the videos that we've been creating as we've been in quarantine so we can access it. And so where do you content. find that? So uh, I went ahead, I've been posting it on Facebook, but I recently just put up everything on a website. It is juliannebakes.com, juliannebakes.com. And you can also click on the link on my Instagram profile and that will take you directly to the page. It archived all the recipes that we went ahead and used and also all of the videos that are corresponding with any of the recipes that we used. You can go ahead and click on it and you can watch, you can relive our greatest hits all day <laughs> long if you like. <laughs> I mean, if you want to see that epic two and a half hour bake that Melissa and I did, like, you know, a couple weeks back, it's there for you. You can go ahead and check it out. Um, and I'm hoping because of all the weird, strange things that Instagram just did, that I can do the same thing for us, Christine, and our, our bake today, because I thought our bake is, was pretty epic. Is this sponsored by Squarespace? It is. <laughs> Mary, do you think I know how to build an actual website? Please. So are you, you going to start a have... blog, Julianne? What was, what was that? Are you going to start a blog? Um, I went in, I kind of started a blog with you the should. recipes. But like it's not an I haven't started doing like an everyday thing. It's been like once a week thing. And yeah, I, yeah, for now, like it's just the things that we've been doing together on, on on this every Saturday as we've been in quarantine. I've just been posting those. But hopefully when we get out of all this craziness, I'll post more about like all the random things that I make. Because as you know, I'm always baking and experimenting in my kitchen 
on the exactly. daily. And now we've just got nothing but time. So I feel like I've been doing a lot more of that and eating a whole bunch of sweets, much to my uh, mother's <laughs> dismay. Uh, so, <laughs> Uh, yes, everyone's doing like podcasts. So uh, we were having this conversation a few weeks ago with Drea. Instagram Live, apparently, so we get a lot of like weird technical issues and feedback and we were talking about it and we think it's because lots of people are doing live all of a sudden because like I said, there's like nothing else going on, right? So lots of people are just starting to use a lot of these functions that maybe they didn't do as much on social media. So Instagram Live, Facebook Live, people are podcasting, uh, lots of people, I think are also doing like starting up like blogs and things and uh yeah and it makes it so easy i was telling my sister the other day building a website i built mine on squarespace but you can do it on wordpress you can do it on whatever and they have templates for you to use it makes it so easy does everyone remember GeoCities and how everyone had to make the people were building their websites on like GeoCities and, yeah. and you had to know like really like you had to know code because there wasn't templates for you like it was really archaic and crazy so you don't have to live through that life, you guys. We've gone past that. You can actually get your own like website and things like that by using like you know WordPress or Squarespace. So my timer went off in about a minute. It usually goes off a minute before, and I'm gonna go ahead and check it out then. Sherry, welcome back. <laughs> no one no. Mary, <laughs> you're older than me. Let's not talk, Mary. You are older than I. <laughs> <laughs> If we are counting like beans or apples and oranges, you are older than me. So, <laughs> so you cannot say you cannot say that no one's older than me. You are older than I am. Uh, Christine is the youngest one of us all because her birthday's not until the fall. So, I am. That's right. So she can she can say that even more. I am so bummed we never got to do our forties trip. Coronavirus. It is memorable, isn't it? <laughs> I know. Eventually, eventually, we have our fiftieth. <laughs> I know. Maybe, maybe years from now, and that's right. We'll all still look. You so know, are you gonna pull yours good. out? I've been going to take a look at mine right now, so okay. I'm gonna do that. My caramel is not melting. It's not supposed to. Your your caramel is gonna be pretty solid, Christine. It's going to solidify as it cools down. So mine, it's. Like, I'm gonna show you guys mine. It should be a little bit more. I'm going to put mine for another five minutes or so. It's only starting to get golden brown on the top. But do you see how this, the, the condensed milk at the top was very light? Here, I'll show you the, was very light, remember? And look how now it's kind of getting this golden color. I'm going to put this in for about another five minutes just to go ahead and do it because it should be a little bit more golden than this. This is pretty golden. And again, here's the comparison. That was the color it started. This is the color it is now. Um, I'm going to put it in. It's starting to become a little bit caramely colored. Caramel, caramel, you know what I'm talking about. About another five minutes. I'm going to switch it around, though, and, like, halfway turn my pan. Maybe I'll switch mine around, too. And the reason why I do that, where I switch my pan halfway like that, is because you want to give it an even bake. And switching your pan halfway will ensure, because like I said before about your oven temperatures, halfway um, through is because the back of your oven might be hotter than the front of your oven. And you're just making sure the bake is even. So that's the only reason why uh, you did that. Okay, carded for senior hour at Costco. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I actually would love, actually I still, sometimes I do, sometimes I do get carded, but like, Carded for like, you know, things where you have to be over 21, but definitely not under 21. I think I've, my ship has sailed. I, I definitely <laughs> don't think, I definitely don't think I look like a teen anymore. If I, I think, but I can still get away with getting discounts uh, for students, student discounts at like museums and things like that. So awesome. if, if you still have your, I mean, I use my graduate school card, so I guess it's not that far off because it was, it's been a while since we've been at Davis, right? But my graduate school card, I use that all the time because <laughs> I, I i like to believe i look the same guys you do thanks christine <laughs> you do too i think we still but you know what the older we get i wonder to ourselves i mean we're just used to seeing each other like you know you're seeing yourself every day like i don't feel as we get older i don't feel like i look any different but i mean i'm sure we have more gray hairs than we would like to admit <laughs> um <laughs> oh timer i'm doing mine for another five so I'll just wait for you. Because I mean, can it over bake? 
uh, I think what it is is going to happen is you can burn your con your condensed milk at the top. Your condensed milk. So, if for anybody that like wants to try this, actually, you can make dolce de leche with condensed milk. Uh, all you would have to do is you take the same can. The safest way to do it. Lots of people actually take this can, submerge it in water on the stove top for hours, and you run the risk of sometimes exploding your can, but you can do that. Uh, you can go ahead and put that uh, under water and then for two hours, like on low, and when you open the can and take it out, this color is actually gonna be dolce de leche color. It'll be dark, it'll be like caramel, right? Um, I like opening the can, getting another can, like um, a mason jar, anything that can withstand heat, right? And go ahead and take that, put this uh, uh, condensed milk, put it in a mason jar, close it all up, and then put it in your slow cooker, like on low, and submerge it in water. Take the whole jar, submerge it in water, and leave about two or three inches on top, and walk away. And then three hours later, take the mason jar out, and it's going to be dolce de leche. And you've just created dolce de leche. Really? That's it. all you that's, do? That's all you do. And um, you can use that for the base of lots of things. You can dip fruit in it if you just want to like be basic about it. You can use it as like a dip for like I don't know if you have random. I don't know. I was about to say like if you make churros, <laughs> you want to be you want to be extra about it. I don't know bread. You can put some like on toasted bread. You can put it at the bottom of like a pie crust and then like you know make some sort of like whipped topping on top and make some sort of cream pie. Put some. They have a dessert in England where they do a pie crust, dulce de leche, they put bananas, and then they go ahead and put whipped cream. And I mean, that's delicious. So you can do that as well. That they call great. it the banapi, the banapi pie. So that's what you can do. But again, and this is the stuff you can do with regular condensed milk. You can also use condensed milk if you have extra left. You can make uh, ice cream with condensed milk that doesn't churn. So you add this as a base to, um, you know, like other, cream and like flavoring and then you just stick it in your freezer and when it comes out it's ice cream sandwich cookies yes that's a good one too sherry you can make uh sandwich cookies argentinian sandwich cookies with the dolce de leche and again you just open your can of dolce, uh, condensed milk i was about to call it dolce de leche you can also buy the can of dolce de leche but that's basically what they're doing they're just cooking the um the condensed milk so the reason why I went off on this tangent about <laughs> the Dolce de Leche is that's basically what we're making, you guys. That's basically what's happening in our, in our ovens right now. We're making like a caramel Dolce de Leche out of our sweetened condensed milk. So it can get really brown, very brown. We want it to get to like a golden brown, darkish brown. The thing that you worry about um, overcooking is your toppings, like the coconut will burn, the chocolate chips might get too dark, or the if you're using white chocolate chips, not dark chocolate chips, white chocolate chips might get too dark. Uh, Christine used caramel, and her, she says, is not setting. It won't, because, <laughs> no, Christine, it'll be so fine. lovely then. It'll it's... be fine when it cools down. The reason why is because the caramel, obviously, is liquid because it's hot, right? When it's cooled down, it gets thicker. So you let it sit Right, but should, it should be melting right now, right? It's going to be very liquid, Christine. It's like when you put car caramel on top of brownies. It's going to be pretty liquid. And it's going to bubble. It's probably going to bubble up, too. But when you cool it down and you let it sit on the counter for a few minutes, because you should, anytime you get anything baked goods out of the oven, you need to let it cool down for a bit before you actually lift it up and cut it. Then you need to go ahead and let it sit down or like on, on your um, cooling rack for a little bit, because by the time it cools down, it'll be thicker. It'll probably be the same consistency, Christine, as the dip that you had originally. So whatever the dip, when it cools back down. <laughs> Look at the face you're like, meh, <laughs> all right. But that's what you were gonna use it for, Christine. You were gonna make that I know, oh, I but am now not it's melted with the You know, it's melted with the flavors. Caramel, I can't do it, Melissa. I can't <laughs> do it. I say caramel, I can't. I mean, I guess I'll say caramel. No, I'll still say caramel when I say caramel apple. I mean, I don't know, but it's, I think it's just one of those things too. I have this whole conversation uh, with just enunciations and things that we call things. Like we say like soda, and then I know Midwestern people call it pop. I mean, it's, you know, it's right. I know, but that's all the same thing. I know that's what you're thinking. It's basically the way that we all pronunciate things. My timer just went off again. 
So I'm about to go ahead and check my layer bars right now. I'm going to take them out of the oven. And let's go ahead and take a look at it and see, right? Hopefully my pot holders I've got. Gotta check these out. Ooh, much better. So, okay. There you. Now mine is a lot more golden on the top. It's the, the even bake is actually pretty golden. And I'm going to show you the comparison again. Remember the condensed milk was this lightish, almost cream color. And now that it's been baking for a while, do we see, don't touch it, it's very hot obviously. Um, you can see now how it's gotten kind of this golden brown caramel color. I said caramel, that's just for you, Melissa. <laughs> this caramel color, right? Um, with the toppings, uh, it looks pretty good actually. You don't have to do the toothpick method. I will because we did a cookie base. Just to check the bottom. See, this is mine. This is what I meant by my caramel blobs. Oh. It's very blobby, but, Should but be other okay. than that, it looks pretty good. I think it looks good. And what's nice about yours, Christine, is because you have, because Christine's using a glass pan, she can actually see the bottom. I use an aluminum pan. So I'm not quite sure if my cookie base actually is cooked all the way through. So I'm going to take a toothpick, and I'm just going to put it straight through the center. It's pretty cooked on the top already, to be fair, and I can just take this out right now. But I'm gonna stick my toothpick in just to check the bottom of my cookie, and it's clean. So I know that the cookie on the bottom is cooked. You're gonna have to let this sit. I know it's gonna be hard. You're gonna have to let this sit in the pan and cool down for at least 30 minutes, because right now, everything is still very hot, very liquid, especially Christine's, because she put caramel on hers. There's caramel again, that's number two for Melissa even though I want to say caramel, um, in it. How do I know if it's like the cookie and not my, I don't know, there's there's all sorts of stuff melting in here. Stick it straight in the middle, Christine, or you can do it. I'd like to check in three different places. I also check on the outside. It should come, if you're just seeing like chocolate, it's fine, right? It should be pretty clean though. Like you shouldn't have like bits of cookie. If you're seeing bits of cookie, that's not cooked. But if it's pretty clean and all you're seeing is like, this, for example, is just like chocolate. This is mine. Yeah, you're good. I think you're okay. I think you're good. How long have you been putting it? If you feel weird about it, you can put it in for another five minutes. Just in case. Just in case, if you feel weird about it. I'm not. I'm going to take mine out um, because it's pretty set on the top. And I'm going to show you guys again the angle so you guys can see. I'll give you maybe a different angle. <laughs> right? It's pretty golden on top like I said. And it's still bubbling, actually, as I lifted it up, and I'm not going to tilt it, because if I tilt it, I think the whole thing is going to slide out of the pan. Um, it is going to cool down, and you need to let it cool down for at least 30 minutes. Let it sit in the pan for a second. Don't try to take it out. When you take it out, if you've used the aluminum method, you can take out the aluminum foil straight up from the pan. If you did what Christine did, she greased her pan because she was using a glass pan. You're going to have to go ahead and cut from that pan to get it out in order to lift out. You might, because of the way that it is, you might be able to take the entire thing out and then cut them up individually. But especially if it's still warm, you don't want to do that because unless, and this is how, um, you know, I backtrack a lot, unless you're the type of person that likes really warm desserts. Like, see, Alex, did you like that gooey chocolate chip cookie or like that gooey brownie taste? Well, yeah, then you can eat it when it's warm. But if you want that actual bar, you know what I'm, what I'm saying when I say bar, like it's actually solid, then you have to wait because everything needs to cool down and melt together because it's still in like a liquid state. You're, remember, we were using condensed milk and it has become now like this caramel. Again, Melissa, that caramel. I want to say caramel so bad. I've been holding it back. Car caramel. <laughs> um, what you call it base like that you created. I say that with a quotation mark because you've not made, oh, I was about to say, I was about to say a uh, caramel and then I was like, mm, caramel, I can't do it. It wants to say caramel, I'm gonna say caramel. That say caramel, caramel, the caramel um, that comes out from it. So um, that's it. Christine, did you put yours back in or are you going with it? Nah. You I'll put yours in front of the five minutes? Dangerously. Okay. I'll see how it turns out. You see how it's gonna turn out? Okay, cool. <laughs> so that means we're done. I mean, we still went over our like hour time, but thank you so much for joining 
this chit chatting that we were having Christine and I together as we randomly started talking about pronunciations of caramel or caramel, <laughs> however you would like to pronounce it, uh, as the bake went on. Um, and we made these toffee cookie layer bars. If you made them with us, or if you make them after us, or if you make it later on during the week, please go ahead and tag Christine and I so we know what it looks like and how you did and let us know your comments. I would love to know if everybody did crazy toppings because you didn't have to be basic like, you know, like I was. You could have been crazy and added caramel, oh, caramel like Christine. That should be the word of today's episode, I think. If you were to play the drinking game, that would have been the word of today's uh, word of the day. But uh, that's, if you use that kind of stuff, I'd love to see how it turned out. Because like I said, you could have made a healthier version of it by putting like pumpkin seeds and raisins and, you know, dried cranberries and things uh, before oh, we dumped nice. a whole bunch of condensed milk. And um, if you use the rest of your condensed milk, let me know how you used it. Because like I said, you didn't have to use the entire can. I mean, I saved mine for coffee. I don't know what you guys are saving. Me yours. too. So, all right. Thank you again oh, for joining thanks, us. Well, thanks for having me. I, was thanks, Christine, everyone. for joining me all the way from California. Guys, thank you for sticking with us uh, over an hour. One of these days, I might have to pre-measure things. I don't know how I'm going to do it. One of these days, hopefully, we won't go over an hour. And one of these days, I'll figure out my technology. Oh, Mary's going to be on next week? That's right. Ah, I guess That's I should nice. give her a shout out. Mary and I are going to be on next week. So you've seen her behind chatting, commenting. You will now see her in front of the screen with me. Who is going to field the comments? Who is going to chat with you guys? Melissa so, yeah. will have to do it. I know someone's going to have to to kind of fact check us because the person who fact checks me will be on with me. It's going to be like a weird Inception thing. It's like Inception. I <laughs> don't think I used the word Inception, right? You're right. I didn't. <laughs> so, anyways, Mary's going to be on with us. I'll let you know what we guys what we're going to make next week. We're going to make. Um, we think we're going to make, uh, I always say what we're going to make, and then that's not what we end up making. But we think we're going to make some sort of scone slash like biscuit. So that's what we're going to do uh, next week. Mary says she can fact check herself because she's the science expert. All right, Mary, you can fact check yourself. That's allowed. She's going to call me on my crap live next week. So, <laughs> all right. Thank you for joining Christine and I as we reminisce about UC Davis. And uh, let us know how everything turned out. And enjoy your Saturday. Stay safe. Uh, be well and eat dessert. Okay. Bye, bye, bye. everyone. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye, bye, bye. Bye. <laughs>